You are watching William Patterson University Television. Welcome back to the desk. We're in the first quarter of the NBA season and we have Justice, Andrew, Antonio, and Najee to break everything down that's been going on in the NBA. Now, Monday night we saw a big game. We saw the Brooklyn Nets go against one of the hottest teams in the East, Justice. The Chicago Bulls and Nets play. You know, it was a really good game. It was a close one until the fourth quarter. Yeah, um, yeah, it, it definitely was a close game. The Nets actually had the lead going into halftime, but if you look at the stats, uh, the, the Bulls had more rebounds, they had more assists, they shot more efficiently. But I think the story of the game is the fourth quarter points. The Bulls outscored the Nets 42 to 17 in the fourth quarter. That's disgusting. The Nets defense fell apart. They had no answer for the Bulls. And as for the Nets on the offensive side, they had a bad shooting night all around. Kevin Durant had a great game, so did LaMarcus Aldridge, but Joe Harris shot three for seven, Blake Griffin one for five, Bruce Brown zero for eight. And James Harden's been struggling all season, which we'll get to later, but he shot four for 11, so all around the Bulls just played better. Najee? I mean, just to go off Justin was saying, the Bulls, the Bulls started outscore the Nets, um, well, like about 20 plus points. Zach Levine have has 24, DeVozan had 20, had 28, and they all shot a good percentage. So the problem is that Nets starters need to start picking it up. Antonio, it, excuse me, Andrew. Yeah, I mean, points in the paint was also really big. I mean, they got outscored. The Nets got outscored 54 to 24 in the paint, and then turnovers too were big. The Nets had 14 turnovers compared to the Bulls' nine. You're not going to win a game if you're getting 14 turnovers. Yeah, no, indeed. And, I mean, like Justice, you said, Kevin Durant, he's leading the league in scoring right now. He had a really good game, Antonio. But, you know, that wasn't enough. And, do you, and uh, I mean, James Harden has been struggling. So have the Nets. Do you think that's going to be a factor for the foreseeable future for them? Yes, I do. Because Durant's scoring 40 points a night, and they're still losing. They're getting killed on the offensive glass. Against the Bulls, they lost 15-6 to six on the offensive boards. You're not going to win. Like Andrew said, they got killed down low, 54 to 24. 54 to 24. They're not going to win games if they can't rebound and put points in the paint. I mean, and going from one team who was the favorites to go to the finals in the East, the Nets, to another in the West, the Los Angeles Lakers. I mean, a lot of good and bad for both both ways. I mean, it's 50-50, honestly, if you want to say. Now, Andrew, we'll start with you. You know, who has been the key player for the Lakers, good or bad for you this season? Yeah, you know, I'm a big fan of the man who puts the three to the dome, yes, my yes. boy Carmelo Anthony. New York Nick legend. He's having the best start of his career. I mean, he's shooting 49% from the field, 50% from three. He's averaging 17 points and four boards, 80% from the line. He looks phenomenal. He's pretty, he's like the, the best player he looks like on the, on the Lakers right now with LeBron out, Westbrook struggling. You I mean, know? It, it's so interesting because, you know, people thought he was washed. Exactly. I mean, he had a career resurgence a little bit in uh, Portland last year, but I mean, I love to see him. He's on my team, so, you know, I love that even more. Najee, who you got? Well, I got I got King James, LeBron James. With him, with him being out for the five games, you know, you can clearly tell that they are missing a big piece. And of course, when you, when you have LeBron James, you missing him is of course gonna be a big piece. But he's shooting 24. He's yeah, you know, he's shooting 46 percent, averaging 24, seven seven assists, five rebounds. But still, the Lakers need LeBron if they gonna make it in the West. Justice, uh, I've been, I'm waiting for this one, Justice. <laughs> Yeah, I agree with Najee. The Lakers are definitely missing LeBron James, but I think it's mostly because of the performance of their third option, Russell Westbrook. Uh, he's almost averaging a triple-double, and looking at that, that's what you want to see from your third option. But with LeBron missing half of the games, he's really the second option, so that's just not going to cut it for them. Um, not, he's not shooting well at all from three. I mean, there's a reason why we call him Russell Westbrook, but he was never been the three-point shooter. It's never been his game. But I think the, the real number for me is the turnovers per game, five. You know, when he came on the Lakers, people kind of compared him to LeBron and said he was kind of a mini LeBron, but he's really not. That's LeBron, not true, is it? Yeah, at all. LeBron James is one of the best, highest basketball IQs in the league, and Russell Westbrook, he needs to, he needs to uh, be better late in games with decision-making and passes, and he needs to kill the turnovers. Antonio? It's my key player with LeBron out and with the way Westbrook's playing is Anthony Davis. He's averaging 25 points, 11 rebounds, two blocks per game, and he's shooting above 50%. His three-point is a little low, but he's not a three-point shooter. He just needs to kill the paint. He needs to, he's playing good, but he could step it up a little more with LeBron out and get them over the hump because he needs to be the guy. Yeah, he's definitely the, keeping them afloat. He's definitely sure. he's keeping them he's keeping them. Him and Melo, but how long can you rely on him and Melo? And especially Melo getting up there in age and Anthony Davis, you yeah. know he's very fragile, injury prone. Very. Yes. But I mean he's still a really good player, but you know, you know he had stomach flu a couple weeks ago and you know he still still was contributing. Najee, now Going back to the East, you know, 
two guys, I think they're supposed to, you know, they're supposed to build the Celtics up. But, you know, Celtics are kind of struggling right now. They're 5-6, and six and they're currently sitting 11th in the East Nigeria. You know, what's going on with the Celtics, and specifically with Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum? The crazy thing about it, they, they not having a bad season. They really not. If you compare the stats, they have um, Jalen Brown having a, having a career season. But the thing is with me, it's their inconsistency. Jalen Brown could, could drop 38 and then have 10 the next game. But Jason Tatum is shooting 32, is shooting 38% from the field and 32 from the three. And each and every time and I, I check their losses, and every time it's like under 30% from the field. So they need to that that team big problem is they inconsistent and they need to work on that right now before they before they next thing you know they out the name in the playoffs. Yeah, and it's gonna be tough, you know, the playing games are a thing this year. Andrew, we'll go to you. I mean, Jason Tatum, he was looking to take that next step. You know, he dropped 50 in a playoff game last yep. year. You know, look at him now. You see, you see it on the screen. 38%. That's 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 tough. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he was shooting 38% from the three last year, and now he's down to 32%. I mean, like like Najee said, inconsistency has been the biggest thing for them. They're 11th in the East right now. They, you, if you're the Celtics, you're not you're not a playing team. You're a team that's that that won the five seed, won a six seed. I mean, I think they're going to be fine. I think Brown's going to Jalen Brown's going to come back from this injury. Tatum's going to pick things up. They're going to get the consistency. They're going to be back. They'll, they'll be the Celtics eventually. Oh, I mean. I kind of don't hope so. I don't like the Celtics. Yeah, I don't you... like them either. But, you know. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah, Antonio. I'm, I'm more happy when they go to the playoffs. <laughs> yeah, like right. Andrew and I just said, I think Tatum, Tatum's having a bad start. He'll pick it up. Brown just needs to stay consistent. If Tatum gets hot, Brown needs to stay hot. They're definitely a top five team in the East right now. Um, they will not be 11 seed. They will be a top five team by the end of the season this year. Justice? I agree with, Najee, with, with uh, what Najee said earlier. Jalen Brown is having a career year. As far as Jason Tatum, he's not only shooting, you know, bad from three, but he's shooting bad, period. You know, he's out here thinking he's Kobe Bryant, shooting himself out of games, trying to, you know, do, shoot bad shots every single game. And I think a number, a number that really stands out is both of them have less than four assists. I think that's what the Celtics are missing is a facilitator. You know, Marcus, Marcus Smart called them both out for just shooting and chucking the ball up earlier in the, in the season. So I think that, you know, before the trade deadline, Boston needs to get a, a true point guard. But you can blame that on the coaching because in their sure. offense, they have they, – their offense is mostly ISO. It's just like the Nets offense, if you really – if you see um, um, them side by side, it's almost the same exact offense. They have, they take Marcus Smart, put him in the corner, and they have Jalen Brown and um, Tatum one on one on one with a defender until they shoot the ball. But if you think about it, the Celtics, Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown have never really had that true point guard. They had Isaiah Thomas, who was really a scorer. Kyrie definitely a scorer, and Kemba Walker was pretty much hurt. You know his whole Celtics tenure. So I think they need like a true point guard for sure. Well, gentlemen, you know there's been a lot of rule changes in the NBA. Some. Some things, you know, fouls aren't called. If the offensive player are initiating contact, that's going to be called the offensive foul now. You know, may, I don't want to call people fraudulent, but on this block right here, this last question, people will be called fraudulent. Antonio, we're going to start with you. You know, there's a lot of players who are struggling. Who's, who, you know, who, who, who do we have on the fraud watch to start off? The biggest fraud is Michael Porter Jr. He just got paid a max contract. He was supposed to be the number two guy with Jamal Murray out. He is, last year he was averaged 20 points. This year he's only averaging 10 He's shooting 20% from three. That's horrendous. And he's shooting 30% field goal percentage. That's horrendous. He was down over 20 points. He was shooting 50% last year. He needs to step it up. Yeah, and sadly for him, he just got a back injury, so he's going to be yeah. out for the foreseeable future. So, you know, and like you said, he just he got a bag. He got he a got really, a big, con- he got a really big contract. He's living good. But, yes, he is living good, but he's not playing well. Najee, who do you have? Uh, what I got, I got Mr. Westbrook. But I'm, <clears throat> I'm sorry, Westbrook. <laughs> Westbrook, I'm sorry. Um... He's scoring, he had 19 points per game, 41%, 28 from the three. We all, we all knew this, but the biggest problem that I'm coming, coming to, he may have eight assists, but he also averaging five turnovers per game. So three assists. So really three assists, honestly. <laughs> so Westbrook, to me, been the biggest fraudulent all year long. So I'm, I'm sorry, but like, I'm not, he got to step his game up because at the end of the day, it champion or buzz. 100%, I'm with you, Andrew. Yeah, my biggest fraud is the guy that calls himself Dame Dollar, but I don't even know why we're paying him a dollar right now. Damian Lillard looks terrible this season. The guy can't hit a three at all. He's shooting 24% from three. He used to be shooting around 35 40%. He was a great shooter. You know, he's usually averaging over 27 points a game. The guy's averaging 20 points per game now. You know, I mean, he's averaging eight assists, but, like, other than that, he's not doing much. His team's five and seven. They're struggling right now. He needs to come back. Damian Lillard has to, you know. Yeah. We got Dame. We need Dame time back, you know. Yeah, we do. We need to start shooting from the Dame logo again. 
<laughs> just, as close, just as close as out. Yeah, I agree with all three of you guys. Both, all those players are definitely fraudulent this year, but I'm actually going to go with James Harden. Now, he, he may be almost averaging a triple-double, but for a guy who's always been in the scoring title conversation, he's only averaging 18 points per game. And I think a part of that is from what you said, Samori. You know, he has been struggling with the new rule change with the refs. He's been fishing for fouls. I think I just think he needs to stop doing that. I think he needs to be more aggressive. I want to see the James Harden of you know from Houston. You know that that's aggressive and just and you know scoring 30 points per game. You know because without Kyrie there, the Nets are no longer an unstoppable team. They're just a great team. Well, you guys bought it this block. Uh, I got some laughs. You know, we got people calling them fraudulent. Westbrook, we got it all. But that's all for this week on WP Sports Test. Join us next time as we recap the football season for the Pioneers, and we will travel to the rec center to break down the start of the basketball season for the Pioneers. Don't forget to follow us at Sports Test WP on Twitter and Instagram for updates and more. Thank you for all the cast and the crew, and a special thank you to tall man, Mr. Studio Manager Al Clark. For everyone here from the desk and from Studio B from Hamilton Hall, I'm Samori Rose, and we see you guys next time.